uh, for the United States in Boston. We had uh, a, about one month period where we saw beta and alpha radiation based in particles increasing. And in Seattle, we actually had a two-week period where we had four to five hot particles of radioactive material that was tracked by our quantitative filters in the amount of air that people would breathe in a day. But uh, that radiation seems to have declined. Uh, the thing that concerns us the most currently about Japan is that the means of testing radiation is still focusing on total radiation and not focusing on hot particles. And we're still using things like circular evacuation zones. We actually took people from safe areas that were 20 kilometers from the site and moved them into much more contaminated, unsafe areas that just happened to be further away. This is just done without regard to what the actual scientific data should be telling us. Uh, season 134 and 137 have become ubiquitous throughout Fukushima and even in Tokyo. And uh, in the US, we've seen just a few isolated hotspots where we're detecting cesium from Japan. I think what this tells me is that this 12 mile evacuation zone we set up around the reactors has not been adequate to protect the public health. And before we feel too good about it here in the United States, I should remind you that NRC regulations, in the event of a similar accident in the United States, call for a 10 mile evacuation zone. Thank you. We have time for one question. Yes, please. Um, so the, the issue of that um, particles can expose tissue to much higher level levels of radiation than would be indicated by the total body radiation exposure. Are there epidemiologic studies that say that that then predicts risk um, but, as opposed to actually the risk prediction model based on, on uh, total body exposure? So the question is, is the uh, risk based on a hot particle exposure different from uh, that based on a total body exposure? The way they answer this question is we always say that if you compare like amounts of radiation, is the hot particle different from a total body? Are there epidemi... I mean, I know theoretically there are reasons to be concerned. The question is, is there epidemiological... Yes. Yeah, definitely want to go there. The, the important thing in that question is, is the, that little qualification of the same amount of radiation. Because a hot particle has a very long residence time, and because it exposes specific tissues for a, a long period compared to an external or, or a photon dose like gamma radiation, you tend to get a lot of concentrated radiation with a long residence time, and your total radiation exposure tends to be higher. When you measure, when you correct or normalize for that radiation exposure, when you artificially raise your external dose to the same as the hot particle, in fact, you find that the hot particle is a little less dangerous because your body acts as shielding. Your tissues where the hot particle is shield the rest of your body from that radiation. So the epidemiological studies show a slightly reduced dose. But you've added that huge fudge factor where you've, you've assumed that the external or uniform dose was as big and that's really hard to do with a short-term dose compared to the, the years you can have a hot particle in your body. So if you use that, that fudge factor, you can convince yourself that it's okay. But in real life, the hot particle tends to create a long-term exposure where total radiation goes up more than you would think just based on the, the, the size of the particle. Again, I'd like to thank Marco Kaltofen for excellent analysis. I'd also like to thank Hiro Takaoka, who is the photographer who donated the film. Also, I'd like to thank Safecast and the hundreds of other people who used the internet and provided the raw information to the Boston laboratories that Mr. Kaltofen used in his analysis. And finally, I'd like to thank all of the Fairwinds viewers for the donations that you have made to the Fairwind site during this holiday season. It's your donations that keep the site vibrant and keep us moving forward with our educational efforts. Thank you very much.